Welcome to the webinar on the role of clinical laboratories in COVID-19 organized by Asia Pacific Federation of Clinical Biochemistry and Laboratory Medicine, APFCB. In this lecture, Dr. Julai Kumalavati will be talking on the technical guide to establishing a molecular diagnostic laboratory. Hello colleagues and friends. Today I'm going to talk about the technical guide to establishing a molecular diagnostic lab. Before I start, I will go through the presentation that I will share with you. I will talk about the steps for planning and building a molecular lab, the physical and equipment requirements for that molecular lab, and several designs that we can choose uh, to build our lab. These are the steps needed when you are planning and building a molecular lab. First of all, you have to create a team to prepare and build the lab and identify the scope of service to be provided by the lab. I will go through, through it one by one later. And then the next step is collect all the regulations and rules that are required for a lab in your area. After that, we can, you need to draw the business process that is going to be implemented in the lab. But before you start with all the details, we first have to list the problems or issues that were or might be encountered in during our lab service. Make priorities of which problem of with or which issues that needs to be resolved. And then identify the needs of each step of the business process that you have drawn to prevent the recurrence of problems that might be happening. After that, you can start gathering all the information on the equipment, instruments, the software, the building, the furniture, materials that are available in the market in your area. Then create the criteria of each item needed. You can create some scoring system to to be used as a selection criteria later. And we can start inviting all the vendors to present their products, including the building contractors, and you can score them according to the criteria that you have already uh, determined. Sometimes we need independent fixes, fixes to the sites that have installed or built or operate the system that you are uh, looking into uh, to be put into your molecular lab and gather their experiences so you can hear from them the benefits, the plus, the minus of the, each system. And then from the scores, from the discussion, from the physics, you can determine which item that will be selected for your lab. After that, you have to walk through the proper channel to obtain the items according to your institution because some government has some rules that you have to follow. Then you have to go and walk through the process of obtaining the items without breaking the rules or the regulation of each institution or its country. I will start with the team member. What uh, in the team you need to uh, gather people that will determine or have influence in determining which uh, item, which system that is going to be uh, implemented in, into your lab. Of course, you need the head of laboratory to be there and the institution management to be there. Maybe you need to uh, inform the medical staff, 
the clinicians or the laboratory medical staff, also some technical staff like the laboratory technicians, building maintenance staff like the electrician, electricians, water management, HVAC management, architectural consultant and safety consultants. Don't forget about the waste management staff too, because they play uh, uh, an important role, a role in into our uh, work uh, workflow or working process or business process of the lab. You should also include finance or accountancy staff to uh, help you count. I mean, uh, calculate the financial aspect of this. Uh, building of the lab and maybe you can invite a workflow consultant to make your lab as lean as possible and uh, with a good quality and with a good workflow. Next after you've got the team, try to identify the scope of service of your institution. For instance, the type of laboratory whether it's hospital-based or, or an independent lab. What type of service do you need to uh, give to your customers? Is it 24-7 or only during working days or working hours? What's the prediction of your workload? Number of patients, number of tests. You also need to consider them into your uh, plan or your design of your molecular lab. Rules and regulations. Each country has their own national and local regulations. Don't forget to include regulations on the environmental issues too. And you need to use products that are approved by your government because your government has the uh, responsibility to make sure that the products uh, that are used in your country can be accountable. Besides that, there are also rules on reg and regulations for, for each institution, such as the purchasing mechanism, the ordering, and the... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, verification of the product. So you have to follow each regulation before you start planning to uh, building the lab. This is an example of the scoring system for the selection of an instrument or a building or whatever. For this, uh, in this uh, table, uh, I prepared two examples. One is for the uh, instruments and the reagents and the other two, the, the bottom row is for the building, whether we need, uh, how many rooms that we need. For instance, I uh, divided the PCR system into conventional uh, uh, real-time PCR and rapid automated real-time PCR. And for conventional real-time PCR, I divided them into open system and closed system. Each has their own criteria. For instance, reagent preparation. Do they need a vent to be manually prepared in a laminar flow cabinet and in a positive pressure room? Now, then you can score according to your needs for this because I, I don't have enough room. I need a closed system automated RT-PCR. So I score lower for those uh, with manual open system reagent preparation. But if it's half the automated, half the closed system or semi-closed system, then you can score higher because I still can accept that. But uh, of course the highest score will be if it's all in a closed system, you don't have to prepare, all the reagents are ready for use, then I give a higher score. After that, you can total up the score of each item. So 
and then you can rank them according to uh, the, uh, the each system's score and you can choose which system or which building uh, type that you need to be filled in your lab. These are the issues that to be has to be addressed when you are planning for uh, to build a, a, the the lab building. One is firstly is the layout and the workflow. Whether you need two or three rooms, are these rooms with enter rooms? Do you need freezers or do you need refrigerators? Do you need an extra room for the fridges and the refrigerators? Do you need a storeroom? Do you need toilets, bathrooms, lockers, or changing room? Some countries, they, they provide praying room, pantries, and janitor room. And the physical criteria, of course, you have to follow for uh, the minimum requirement for the uh, Biosafety Level Laboratory 2 or 3. So, for instance, the air, you need to you need to determine the temperature, humidity, air changes per hour, whether the pressure or you, whether it need to be filtered with HIPAA filter or not. The floor has to be easily clean uh, and strong enough to bear the, the weight of the furnitures and the instruments inside the room. Lighting, which lighting do you need? Is it natural lighting or artificial? Do you need additional UV lighting for uh, decontamination? Electricity, you need to calculate the capacity according to the instrument that you are uh, going to UV to use in that room. You need a good grounding check for the specification of each instrument and choose the lowest, uh, uh, the, the best grounding that can be used for all instruments in the lab. You need a backup electricity and then you need the IT network, water, source of water, clean water supply or reverse osmosis water. Don't forget the small thing about the doors, usually we forgot for the doors, especially the width and the height, so the instruments can get into the lab, because sometimes the instruments are so big and you forget, then you have to open and dismantle the door to get the instrument in. You have to uh, you have to uh, calculate the uh, volume, the width, the height of the instrument that is going to be put in the in the in the lab yeah you have to have an access control to the doors benches you need to be strong waterproof chemical resistant and easily clean chairs and stools has to be ergonomic and easily clean waste management you have will you will have liquid waste and solid waste some are infectious, some are non-infectious. We have to address them each, for each type of waste. You need to uh, install sinks, hand washing facilities, eye wash or emergency showers in the lab. You need to put fire extinguishers, em emergency evac evacuation route, and pest control in your lab. Ah, okay, I will start in details for each uh, physical uh, needs of the uh, a good lab. The floor, it has to be strong enough. If possible, it can damp vibrations, non-slip, easily clean with minimum gaps, and you have to be remember. You have to remember that the angle be between the wall and the floor has to be rounded so it can be easily cleaned. The walls, it's better to use semi-permanent partitions. So in case that you need to renovate or, uh, or 
change the dimension of the lab, it can be easily uh, taken off and put a new partition in other places. It has to be easily clean and please remember never use tiles on the wall. Doors should be lockable, wide and high enough to bring the instrument to the lab. Prefer, preferably using double door. The width can be, if it's double door, usually is 90 centimeters and 45 centimeters or 290 centimeters. Put a glass panel on the door so you can see if there is somebody is behind the door. So accidents won't happen when you open the door. Windows. It can be used as a light source or a ventilation. But it can also function as the emergency exit. So it should be open. Uh, it can be opened easily. Easily clean without disturbing the lab activity. And if it's necessary, put an insect screen. Workbenches, it has to be strong to bear the weight of the instruments. Preferably if it's modular, so if you change the layout, if you just move one module from the other. The surface should be easily clean, chemical resistant and heat resistant. The height of the pens, if you are working in a sitting position, is usually around 60 to 75 centimeters. But if you are working in a standing, standing position, it can be 90 centimeters. Work stools or chairs should be water and chemical resistant, easily, easily clean, ergonomic. So it's better if you, ha you can have a uh, stool that can be uh, adjusted, the head can be adjusted. Ventilation. Usually we work in the temperature of uh, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Humidity usually around 40 to 60 percent. You need an air chance of minimal 6, sometimes to 12 times per hour, but it can be up until 20 times per hour. Some uh, area some has to be filtered with HIPAA to prevent uh, infectious air going out of the uh, lab. Sometimes you need to put a positive or negative pressure. So usually the difference is around 0 0.05 water gauss or 12.4 pascal between the uh, atmosphere, atmospheric pressure and the negative or positive pressure room. The lighting can be from the natural light from the windows or artificial light from the light bulbs. Preferably we use white daylight uh, color because if you are using color like yellowish or something like that, sometimes it's hinder uh, our eyes to recognize the color of uh, a solution or a test result. The minimal light intensity in the work area is around 600 lux or lumen per square meters. For administrative uh, work, it can be the minimal can be 400 lux and for waiting rooms 200 lux is enough electricity should be easily accessible the capacity is enough for all the instrument uh, equipment inside the lab avoid using extension cables so you need to put in a backup electricity supply it should be water or chemical paper resistant with easily accessible switches and you need to install safety circuit breakers in case of there's a short circuit and once more please check your grounding system of your electricity
it should be in uh, uh, in accordance to the needs of each uh, instrument or equipment that you are installing in the lab. Water supply. You need a supply of clean water for hand washing or lab equipment washing. Uh, you need a, a tap that can be operated with elbow or foot. The sink should be deep enough, deep enough to prefer to prevent splashing, and it's better if it's scratch proof so it's easily clean. And sometimes some instruments you need uh, pure water such as reverse osmosis water. So you need to calculate the capacity of the reverse osmosis instrument whether it's enough for your equipment in the lab. Fluid system. We have liquid waste and mostly the liquid waste is either infectious and some are chemically uh, contains chemical that you need to process before you release the water into the environment. Please note that if you uh, draw, uh, put in the sewage system, please make sure that if there is a blockage, it should be easily repaired, easily accessible. Solid waste. We have three types of waste, solid waste. Ordinary waste, like household waste, usually paper, wrappers, or something like that. We have infectious solid waste, and we have shops. For ordinary waste, you can use household uh, bag or plastic bag, usually it's black color. But for infectious waste, use the autoclavable plastic bag with yellow or red color. For shops, use uh, puncture-proof plastic containers. Don't forget about the work safety environment. You need to install laminary flow cabinets and biological safety cabinets at least class 2. If you want to have a class 3, it's also okay, it's better. Put in the fire prevention equipment and emergency exits. Install eyewash and emergency shower if needed. You have to segregate the dirty area from the clean area. And you have to make sure that uh, access to the lab should be restricted only to those who are working in the lab. Uh, the ideal design of a monocular lab should be uh, consist of four different rooms, but sometimes we can't have the luxury to have four rooms. Sometimes we only have two or three, yeah, but not less than two. If you have the luxury to have four rooms, you need to have one room for region preparation, another for extraction of nucleic acid, and then third room for amplification, and the fourth room is for post amplification uh, processes. But if you have only three rooms, the first room should be also for region preparation, the second room is for nucleic acid extraction and the third room is for amplification and post-amplification processes. But you, if you have only two rooms, at least you have one room for reagent preparation and nucleic extraction processes, nucleic acid preparing, uh, extraction processes. And the second room is for amplification and post amplification. But two rooms can only be used if you have a um, PCR system which is closed system. So it's a less uh, manipulation to the regions and to the PCR, uh, amplification uh, processes. Mostly if it's done in the closed 
instrument system, then you can ha have a two room lab. The minimum instrument that needed in the Moroccan lab laboratory uh, is as follows. For the reagent preparation room, you need a freezer, at least minus 20 freezer. You, have, you need a centrifuge for uh, ependorf tubes. Sometimes you need ice machine or at least a cool box. You need a refrigerator, an autoclave, maybe a hot air oven, and dedicated micro pipettes. And sometimes you need a spin down centrifuge, a PCR carbonate or lemon reflow for master mix preparation. In the second room, in the nucleic acid um, extraction room, you need a biosafety cabinet. Uh, minimum is class 2, but you can install class 3 also. You need to have a biohazard bin, with a, which, is, which is layered with a biohazard plastic bag. You need a refrigerator and a freezer, centrifuge, maybe a heating block, dedicated micro pads, and dedicated lab floors. So from for each room, you need to have a dedicated uh, protective equipment, dedicated instrument that cannot be moved from one room to another. This dedicated instrument is needed to prevent contamination to your uh, uh, samples or to your regions. There are three types of biosafety cabinets, class 1, class 2, and class 3. Class 1 only protects the things that inside the cabinet, but it won't protect the operator. Class 2 and class 3 will protect both sides. So inside the cabinet, things inside the cabinet, and also the person outside the cabinet. Yeah, so you can use either class 2 or class 3 uh, biosafety cabinet for your molecular lab. For the PCR or amplification room and post amplification room, of course you need another freezer. You need the PCR machine or amplification machine. You need dedicated uh, micropipettes, dedicated protective um, Personal protective equipment. You need uh, sometimes uh, additional if you are doing some post PCR uh, processes. Sometimes you need a microwave oven, electrophoresis uh, machines, melons, yeah, uh, UV transluminator, gel documentation system, and other things that. Um, RT or uh, real-time PCR doesn't need. If you are doing real-time PCR, then you, you only need uh, the real-time PCR machine, dedicated micropipettes, dedicated uh, protective uh, personal protective equipment, freezers, and maybe refrigerator. As we know, one strand of nucleic acid can contaminate your region or your sample, which will cause a false positive result. So these are the, pot uh, the source, potential sources of contamination between such specimens, the amplification product, the lab surfaces, the ventilation system, the reagents, or hair or skin or whatever, and the clothes that are worn by the lab personnel. And we need to control them to stop the contamination. So we need to have dedicated laboratory design 
sorry and it is uh, special laboratory practices that has to be followed and sometimes you need chemical or enzymatic control this is the ideal workflow of a molecular lab so you need at least three or four rooms the specimens will go directly to the specimen processing room the reagents will go directly to the no template lab the region preparation room and the reagents that has been prepared and the the extract of the from the uh, specimen can join together and the room three to be amplified the analysis of the amplification product can be done either in the room four or room three if you are using the real-time PCR please note that to prevent contamination you have to follow a unidirectional workflow from the cleanest to the most uh, uh, potential the most potential contamination can happen in that area so region preparation is the cleanest room and the uh, amplification and post amplification processes will become the source the most source of contamination so you have to work from the cleanest to the dirtiest so you cannot go back the, per the personnel the supplies has to follow all this uni unidirectional workflow you cannot go back from the dirty area to the clean area you need to make sure that the pressure inside the room can uh, prevent contamination for instance for the clean room you need a positive pressure in that room to prevent other contamination from other rooms go into the clean room but for the dirty room you need to be to have a negative pressure room to prevent the amplicons to go out of the room and contaminate the clean room the temperature also will uh, control the contamination because uh, if it's hot and humid of course it's easier to have a contamination in the uh, laboratory sometimes you need to put uv lamp to decontaminate your room from amplicons or from uh, templates uh, that are aerosolized from the specimens but make sure that the uv lamp has the proper wavelength and take note of the usage uh, time that has been uh, the uv lamp is on because uv lamp has their own life span although it looks like it's still working but if it exceed if it exceed the, the the time uh, the lifetime it won't work uh, properly to this decontaminate the uh, room so you need to make take a record on how long the uv lamp has been used and if necessary put in the uh, put the electronic timer switches to the uv lamp the uv lamp for decontamination usually we use the uvz uh, wavelength range which is between 200 
to 280 nanometers. The layout and the airflow of each laboratory should be in such way that you can make sure the unidirectional uh, workflow and airflow. Yeah, for instance, it is a, a, a layout for a four rooms a molecular lab. So the first room, the top one is the cleanest and the bottom is the dirtiest. And the hallway can become the, uh, uh, what is the under room of each room. Yeah. So the, the, the cleanest is of course the region preparation room followed by sample preparation, PCR or pre-PCR template additional room and the PCR and post-PCR uh, processes as the third years. If you have only three rooms, this is also unidirectional from the cleaners. This, this is positive pressure. It's the region preparation room. And then second, the middle room is the sample preparation room that needs to be negative pressure. And the third, the last one is the amplification room and detection area. This also needs to be negative pressure. If you have only two rooms, make sure that your pre-PCR lab is negative pressure and uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, then the post PCR lab is, it's better to have a, uh, sorry, the pre PCR lab has to be positive pressure room and post PCR lab should be negative pressure room. There are other conditions that you should uh, take uh, account to to avoid contamination. Use filter pipette tips because uh, if you you don't put filter in your pipette tips, the pipette can be the source of contamination. And since you are working in the very low volume for the PCR or the amplification or molecular testing, usually around 0.5 microns to 50 microns. So you need to practice your, uh, uh, to use the, or to pipette uh, low volume uh, liquids. We can also make uh, or build a molecular lab which is mobile using a shipping container. So at least two rooms can be uh, prepared in that container. One is for pre-PCR and the other is for the PCR lab. With, uh, each with their own under room and uh, the uh, ventilation, all the pressure, the humidity, the temperature should follow uh, all the basic uh, basics of a molecular lab. But we, with if building in the container, you can move this lab from one side to another. But make sure that you have also waste management uh, and uh, safety uh, features to be installed in this mobile molecular laboratory to prevent contamination to the environment and to the population around uh, this mobile lab uh, on, on site. This uh, uh, figure I downloaded from one uh, vendor that can prepare this uh, mobile lab uh, according to our needs. So, as a closing message, please follow the requirements 
to prevent contamination and to achieve safe laboratory environment. And sometimes we have to improvise things using local conditions and, uh, and the availability to achieve the requirements. And I thank you for your kind attention. And I hope that this uh, share uh, presentation that I shared can be useful for 